everybody. Thanks for tuning in. The topic today is breast augmentation. We've received quite a few questions. Um, these are sort of frequently asked questions, but questions we're going to spend a little bit of time answering, making sure we give clear answers to you so that you can be better informed. Um, the first question is, what is a breast augmentation? That seems very basic, but for me, um, my answer to that would be any procedure or operation where you're changing and especially volumizing the breast. Most breast augmentation, when we say, when we use the term breast augmentation, we're by and large talking about the use of implants to augment the breast. And so placement of breast implants, uh, recovery time is a week. We tell people who have physically demanding jobs and people who work a lot with their hands, stylists, hairstylists, and, and people who do more vigorous physical activity as part of their work, they need about 10 to 14 days to recover. But most people are back uh, at some level of uh, function and back at the workplace in a week. Okay. That's a really good question. I get asked this question all the time. Can I use fat to augment my breast instead of implants? And the short answer is yes, you can. Now the plastic community, the plastic surgery community is somewhat divided on this particular topic. Um, a lot of people who, who advocate this are in favor of it because it's a natural way to augment the breast. Um, and, uh, and in order to be a good candidate, uh, you have to have good donor sites, uh, good skin elasticity in general, no droopiness. Um, but, uh, but I would say more of us than not are opposed to this idea. And the reason is because when, when people are injecting fat into the breast to augment the breast, they're injecting fat into the breast tissue, into the breast gland. And of course, breast cancer and specifically breast cancer surveillance is such an important issue. Um, we favor not grafting fat into the breast tissue. I say we because I'm on the side of the surgeons uh, and providers who think that this is not a great idea. Um, because when you inject fat, you create scar tissue and calcifications, which can mimic or inhibit uh, uh, breast cancer surveillance. Yeah. You know, that's a great question. We get asked this all the time, not just about breast augmentation, but any plastic surgery uh, procedure. And the short answer is, have a consultation with a board-certified plastic surgeon, have them do a physical exam, evaluate you, and then let you know more about your candidacy. I will say this about uh, breast augmentation specifically. We see a tremendous uh, number of people who want to volumize and improve the shape of their breast. Um, many of them need a lift, and, and whether or not you're droopy uh, or, or whether or not you need a lift, uh, we really need a consultation with a board-certified plastic surgeon to determine that. Great question. Is it better to place the implant on top of the muscle, which we call the subglandular plane, or is it better to place the implant underneath the muscle, which we call subpectoral? Subglandular, subpectoral. And that has to do with the relationship of the implant to the pectoralis major muscle, your pec muscle, as we commonly call it. And I have a strong bias for subpectoral implant placement. Now, breast augmentation has been happening in some form with implants since the late 1950s, and, um, and some trends uh, we've seen come and go, and, and it was really popular uh, some years ago to put the implant on top of the muscle. The reason most of us who, who don't um, prefer this approach, the reason uh, that many of us have problems with this approach is that if you do that, over time, the implant tends to drop down and drop out. And especially as women have changes associated with hormones, meaning childbirth, aging, menopause, etc., the breast tissue becomes thin. The skin is not as elastic as it used to be. And so these implants that are just being held up by a little bit of breast tissue and skin tend to drop over time. Um, and that makes them, uh, oftentimes they will end up in the wrong position and oftentimes the breast tissue over it will become thin, uh, leading to implant visibility, these are things to be avoided. And so if you place it in the subpectoral position, you're much less likely to have complications associated with malposition as described and also less likely to have complications such as abnormal scar tissue around the implant. They also tend to be 
in a higher position, which most of, most of us think is a uh, more youthful and attractive position. So again, some surgeons disagree with this. In our practice, we tell people a total of six weeks. The first three weeks, you'll wear it day and night. You'll actually sleep in a sports bra. This helps compress the breast, keep swelling out of the breast, and help things heal faster. Um, and then we have people wear a sports bra during the day for three weeks after that. So um, a total of six weeks. Great question. Every operation, everything we do carries with it some risks. And a surgeon once told me, um, deciding someone's candidacy or whether someone uh, should have surgery or not is really weighing the risks and benefits very carefully. And I believe that's true. Um, the risks are bleeding, infection, healing complications, loss of nipple sensation. Most of those risks are quite low in, in most folks, and, uh, and for most folks, the benefits uh, outweigh the risk. But again, talk with your plastic surgeon, your board-certified plastic surgeon, to determine your candidacy and, uh, and learn more about that. Okay. Great question, some variability. If you ask providers uh, that question, when can I start working out uh, after a breast augmentation? Our rule is three weeks in, the, in our practice. We tell people um, we want you, of course, walking the day of. Breast augmentation is almost always done in an outpatient setting, so you'll be walking, doing things for yourself that evening and, of course, all the next week and, and, uh, and throughout the recovery. But week three is when we release people for vigorous physical activity. For most people, um, uh, or so for many people, that is everything from working out in the gym, swimming, jogging, um, sex, any type of vigorous physical activity, we want you to wait three weeks for that. All right, guys, that was a really uh, great, great questions. I appreciate you sending those our way. Uh, we'll keep answering them as long as you keep asking them, and thanks again for your time.